words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. My heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. For today's gospel reading, I included the optional verses 10 to 20. And really, I want you to know that to understand this, you need to read the whole chapter. Matthew chapter 15. And so I want you to do that this week. So that you keep thinking about this message today, which is a message about refocusing our faith. There was a controversy, and it explains at the beginning of the chapter that uh, some Pharisees and religious officials got offended because Jesus' disciples didn't observe the extensive rituals for washing before meals. Now, these were Jewish traditions, not scripture, but they were laws that extended out of the holiness code typified in the Old Testament book of Leviticus. Cleanliness. What is your standard for cleanliness? Now, well, let me see a show of hands. How many of you have ever watched a training video about washing your hands? All right, there are more of you in this group, all right, than at the first service. I was shocked at the first service, maybe like four people. But uh, there's still a lot of you that haven't. You know, when I uh, mentioned that when I served as a hospital chaplain, this was one of the first requirements, was to sit down and watch the video on how to wash your hands before every patient visit and afterwards. But I see we've got our parish nurse here, and so I'm going to ask Brenda Reiches to stand up and just, just explain for those of you who haven't seen the training video, uh, you know, some tips. <laughs> See, that takes a while. 15 seconds. Thank you, Brenda. All right, well, what if we were to institute a checkpoint before you receive communion today? Our ushers um, uh, would be given uh, ultraviolet lights, okay? And so before you came up to communion, you'd have to show your hands to to see if you know, all the germs and dirt are, are really gone. And, um, I mean, that would be like the modern-day equivalent of what was going on here back in Jesus' time. It was only if you were squeaky clean and, or ultraviolet clean that clean enough you got to come to the Lord's table. How many would get through? And so, you see, Jesus got irate about this rulemaking because it was a complete loss of focus on what God was calling the children of Israel to be in this world. They were focusing on rituals and requirements uh, and in doing so they were setting up barriers for people to come and worship God. They were denying people access to God, creating an exclusive club for God's favor and grace. But you know, this reliance on rules was just part of what got Jesus so mad. He saw what was coming out of their hearts. He saw their hypocrisy. Religious officials had turned the church into a business that benefited those in power and ignored the poor who went hungry. And worse, Jesus looked into the darkness that comes out of the human heart. And we heard those. And this was not at all what it meant to have God's heart as our heart. So, I mean, this is my take on it, but you read chapter 15 and you probably think the same. So Jesus split. Like he just got out of town. He was somewhere, you know, um, in the territory of Israel, but um, then he just left. And he goes way off to uh, the resort cities, well, they're Phoenician seaports, anyway, Tyre and Sidon. And you can go home and look in your study Bible, look at a map to see how far away, how much space he needed. <coughs> 
here's the thing. A Phoenician woman, a Gentile, to be clear, came chasing after him. And however uncomfortable or confusing this encounter seems, remember that it was kept in the gospel for us to read. And so I want you to want to urge you to not to resist the urge to fix Jesus in this story because we want to try. I mean, suddenly he sounds so intolerant, completely standoffish. Why is he silent to this woman's desperate plea? Where's his compassion? And then he calls her a dog. 